Uh, we're back. We're live. We're here on Think Tech Talks on a given Tuesday with Dennis Callen, traveler par excellence par extraordinaire. Mm. It's French, actually. Thank Dennis. you. Oh, very good. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking French, how about some Italian? German? <laughs> we'll stick with English. Thanks for coming down. Uh, you're welcome. Thanks for inviting me. We it's have called be fun. this in your name, Travels with Dennis Callen, because you do a lot of travels. Why I don't do. you tell them how much, how much travels, how many travels, what kind of travel you do? Oh, yeah. That'll take the whole hour, though. <laughs> 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 I, I've been traveling since I was born. I was born into a military family, uh, Europe for three years as a little kid, and uh, traveling since then. Although I kind of dropped anchor in Hawaii in 1967. God, that's almost 50 years and ago. Yeah, I, didn't, just count I didn't travel a lot when I first got here because, you know, why bother? Why go? That's what people tell us when we travel. Why did you leave Hawaii? Yeah, yeah sure. We're so lucky to be here. But I, I've been seriously traveling for about 25 years now. I've been leading tours to Europe. And in that time, I've led 70 tours to 70. Europe. 70, yeah. yeah. And uh, usually with about 15 or 20 people from Hawaii. It's a job. It's a job, yeah. I organize the group, and then I uh, set up the hotels, and then I lead the tour. So I want to visit that moment when you decided to you know, make a job out of it. But, but you know, that's a great moment. So I think I'm good enough at this, and I like it, and I want to integrate what I like and what I can, yeah. and I'm going to make it happen together. That, that way. It's yeah. true. There, there were a number of moments like that along the way, and several epiphanies that, that led me to it. And that, too, that's another hour right there. But it, 1985 is okay, when I got okay, a cheap okay. ticket to Europe, All you know, right. basically backpacking, cheap hotels hills, the bathroom down the hall, and that kind of thing. And I covered a lot of ground by train in, in six weeks. And then two years later... URL pass. It was a URL pass, All yeah. Right. Uh -huh. Two years later, my friend Antonio of Best Tours hooked me up leading a tour. I had never done it before. For but Best 1987, tour. yeah. Uh, it was a bus tour of Europe. Uh -huh. And uh, I didn't care too much for being on the bus, so I thought, well, I was enjoying the train a couple of years ago, so why not do tours by train? And so... That's my website, Tours by Train. Okay. And that's how we travel. We go by train. Toursbytrain.com. Yeah. That's simple. Uh -huh. That's it, yeah. yeah. And then my other site is Tour Videos, where I reference my thousand videos that I've got on YouTube. So I, I shoot videos as we travel. What's your uh, video uh, address? It's um, on YouTube. You can just look up my name, Dennis Callen, okay. and that'll bring you to my channel. Or have a separate website, tourvideos.com. So you're still doing it even more active, I guess, uh, now as you were then? I am. Uh, I do about three trips a year to Europe. And then when I'm home, I'm pretty much working full-time editing my videos, which, uh, as oh, you know, video takes forever yeah, to put together. Yeah, do it right, yeah. Yeah, so I, I, I'm working every day and editing my videos. Will you give me a piece, and I'll, I'll put it on our OC16 show? Sure. Yeah, you know, I've got a lot like of that. pieces. Yeah. yeah. I, it's just a lot of fun. It's been a very creative experience for me. and. And I, I've brought about 1,400 Hawaii people to Europe during that time, and they've all had a good time. And so that's very uh, gratifying. So I me. have a question for you. You know, I mean, I've done the train business. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, oh, gee, I remember we took a train trip where it was from Western Europe to Eastern Europe, which is always very exciting, you know, the, mm, the contrast. Yeah, the contrast. Mm. But, but, you know, sleeping on the train, it ain't easy because mm -hmm. um, the thing rattles and rolls and mm -hmm. makes noise and jumps up in the middle of the night. Yeah. Um, how true. do you deal with that? We don't sleep on the train. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no. right. We it's go too expensive during, for during the day. Yeah. During the day. So it's usually it's a two hour or a three hour trip from one city to the next. In my youth, uh, when I was in, in 85, I was sleeping on a few trains. Yeah, we did that. And I brought some student groups uh, from Punahou and elsewhere, and we've slept on the trains, but in, in sleepers. But no, we stay in nice hotels. Four stars usually. Oh, very nice. On average, yeah. And you know, it's, it's so important when you travel to have a, a hotel, we'll get into logistics of travel yeah. in our discussion, but to have a hotel, hotel that's in the center of town. You want to be in the center. You don't have to slip in and then slip out again and then slip in again in the morning. <laughs> yeah, you know, you want about three days in a place, and so you unpack a little bit, and, and from that central hotel in a good city, you're going to see so many things. Yeah, it's yeah, so much yeah. fun. Oh, God, I want to go on one of your trips. Oh, if I want on. to go on one of your trips, I just go to your website yeah, and see tours, what you're doing? Yeah, tours by train. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Yeah. You're getting good at this after a while, huh? It takes a while. I wasn't that good at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> but you were determined. <laughs> yeah, I made a few mistakes now and then, but uh, my wife helped to train me. 
on the yeah. trains. Speak all the languages? What? How do you get around? Uh, really, just a little bit of restaurant Italian and German. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're fortunate, in, as being English speakers, that most European personnel who deal with travelers, they speak English. Yeah. So we're spoiled. Yeah. You just have to be able to chat them up, though, don't you? You, you know, it's yeah. real important to learn at least a few words. Hello, how are you? Yeah, Do you friends. speak English? Bonjour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just break the ice in a friendly way yeah. as, as they do with each other. You know, Europeans are really quite friendly. I agree, but especially the Italians. Oh, they're the they're most super duper friendly. It's strangers, it doesn't matter. They've been, it's okay. They have been officially recognized as the world's friendliest people. Yeah, it's and it's really true. Let me take a minute and tell you my Europe joke and see if you agree. Okay. okay. All right. There's heaven and there's hell. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. In heaven, you know, the policemen are British. Uh, you know, the uh, let's see, the cooks are Italian. Uh, the uh, the uh, mechanics are the mechanics are German and the lovers are French and the lovers are French. That mm -hmm. that's in heaven. Mm -hmm. You heard this already. Uh, I've heard. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> in, in hell, it doesn't work quite the same way. All well, the police are German. <laughs> uh, the uh, the the cooks are British. <laughs> the mechanics are French, and um, oh, I forgot the Swiss. Oh, uh, the and, lovers are Swiss. And the lovers are Swiss. <laughs> <laughs> there are there are certain cultural differences, <laughs> and it's true. It, and that's not changing. <laughs> no, no, it's been locked in there for hundreds of years, yeah. and that's a good thing. That, that's the variety, sure, the sure. spice of life. That's what makes it work. Well, within Switzerland, you've got all of that combined in one country. That, that yeah. too, is a, a wonderful place to visit. Yeah. In fact, that's the only country right now that I do as a single country tour. Um, usually my tours go to two or three countries, four countries, but Switzerland itself, you can just visit. They've got the French speaking, the German, the Italian speaking, mm -hmm. you've got the mountains, the towns, the cities, yeah. the countryside. Yeah, yeah. It's great. Well, I wanted to uh, sort of divide this up a little bit. We've had discussions in advance, mm -hmm. and I wanted, to, uh, I wanted to talk about tech, and you're per per a perfect person to talk about tech. And so let's talk about tech and travel. I should have called this Tech Travels with Dennis Callen. Mm, but let's, sure. it's, it's implied. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tech, tech uh, contributes so much nowadays to, yeah. to our world of travel. You know, from uh, finding hotels. Yeah, sure. There's so many websites now for finding hotels, uh, for booking your flights, of course, and then for bringing information with you in your tablet or in your phone or in your laptop. Uh, and for researching, my goodness, for using the web before you go. So let's talk about before you go. Yes. You want to do your basic research. You've probably got a few places in mind. You, everybody has a bucket list, places they want to go. And so you get busy, you start Googling. You go to Wikipedia, you go to Wiki Travel, and then you start clicking links. And of course, we know that's endless. You just keep going. It's a joy when you're traveling on the web. It's so easy and cheap. <laughs> it, yeah, it is. And then there's visual information there, too. That Flickr is a very good website now, They're improving with Yahoo taking it over yeah. for just browsing places photographically. Google Earth is incredible for scoping out a town and deciding, well, do I really want to go to Cadiz in Spain? What is, what is Cadiz like? And so you have all those visual tools. You can drop in, walk down a street. It's you know, amazing. A friend of mine lives in Israel, okay? And uh, you know, I, got, I got an email from her, and I, and I found the name of the kibbutz that she lives on. So I went there by, by wow. you know, Google Earth. Yeah. And I could walk down the street, okay, of this, this remote town on the, on the Jordan border using Google Earth, that's amazing, you know? Mm. And you can do that anywhere, really. You know, even in an area which is like, you know, maybe under some, some duress, and maybe they don't want to give away mm -hmm. all the secrets, but you can walk down the street in a, in a town in Israel. You can, you can do it, and increasingly, Google is taking you off the road, too. The Grand Canyon, the Honolulu Zoo, where they have their backpack cameras. They're gonna have your home pretty soon, the inside of buildings. The inside. They have, they have you be internal. careful who you let in your house. <laughs> <laughs> X-ray. <laughs> okay. But so. yeah, that, so now once you've captured uh, that stuff, you've looked at it on the web. You want to uh, capture it. You want to download it somehow and put it into your phone. Uh, smartphones are so ubiquitous, but that screen is so darn small mm -hmm. that uh, I really suggest a tablet when mm -hmm. you're traveling. Not uh, a laptop. Well, laptop, sure, but I think. More so nowadays, a tablet. Okay. More and more people are, you know, just getting by. You know, the ubiquitous iPad, of course. Uh, and I suggest that you use so the Safari browser 
and save a page as a web archive. That format as web archive uh, transforms transfers very well to the iPad. Mm -hmm. And it looks just like the web page. And you can send it to the iPad. Y you can send it. Now that's another story. Uh, how how to get information from your computer into your iPad, for example. And of course, iTunes can do it, but uh, it's very limited. It's great for music and for pictures and for movies, for videos. Fine for that. But for data, for moving other things, I prefer uh, third-party apps, and my favorite is Air Sharing. Like air sharing, your notes, it's about yeah. $5 for air sharing. There's no monthly fee, of course. And it, it connects your device to your computer wirelessly. It's so easy to do, really simple. And then once they're connected, you can just drag and drop things from the computer into the tablet, oh, oh. into folders, into subfolders, highly organized. And so that- That's downloaded into both machines. You download it into your computer. Yeah. And then once it's downloaded, one way or the other into your computer, your laptop, whatever. Yeah. Then you can just drag it over to your uh, iPad, to your device. Fabulous. Yeah, and then it's all organized and it just works really well. Uh, so you can grab those web pages and then once the web page as a web archive is in your device, then you can be in your hotel room uh, if you're on Wi-Fi in the room when you're traveling and you call up that page in your device and you can click a link and it'll actually go to that website. It's just like you brought up the page. It's exactly Except like it's an that. accumulated page it's all, all the stuff you put on there. Exactly. You've got it all organized. Right. And right. That is very helpful. And that's all free. Yeah. Can't beat that. Uh, another way to get good information into your device is by scanning in pages from books. Most of us have travel books and libraries loaded with travel books. And it's a pain in the neck to bring more than a book. Oh, sure. Heavy, heavy, heavy. <laughs> a 50-pound limitation on your suitcase. My now. wife knows how to do that. Yeah. So uh, before my last trip, I, I took a stack of books that high, and I just scanned in the appropriate chapters, the stuff I wanted. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't bring any books. Right. And it was all organized. Then, then you can take uh, all the chapters on Lucerne from 10 different books and put them in one folder. And so it's really handy to do it that way. And just by scanning, you know, scan, desktop scanner, create PDFs as you scan. Sure, sure. It's really basic. Kind of folder. Stuff. And then you're on the train or whatever, or That's on the plane, it. and you're, you're refreshing. By the time you get there, you really know what you're doing. That's the time to do it. Um, before you get there or the night before when you're relaxing in your room, you're going to sleep. Not so much when you're out walking around. Uh, you don't want to fiddle too much. Yeah. We'll get to that too. How to get the most out of being yeah. being there. Yeah. You want to be there with as little between you and the event as possible. But preparation really helps. What about cameras? Ah, uh, well, you know, the smartphone has become the number one camera in the world now. And for many good reasons, it's ubiquitous. You pull it out and bang, and that's great. Um, shooting your food, uh, using a flash, and, and they're very good. I prefer using a real camera, and it doesn't have to be a big digital SLR, because the smaller compact cameras nowadays have gotten really good. They've, they've broken through the problem of low light. Yeah. It used to be that the little cameras were terrible in low light. Yeah. Now they're very good. Yeah. So by low light, you just mean indoors, or twilight, or nighttime. Yeah. And so you can take pictures without using flash or just using a little flash. That's another nice thing about a real camera. You can just turn on a little bit of flash if you want to, to highlight. Yeah. Too much flash and it, it blows it out. It, it's oh, not a good picture. It, not a good picture at all. Yeah. That's a problem with the smartphones. Yeah. So uh, I, sure. yeah. I suggest you get a good little pocket camera and, and pay some money. Pay 600 800 I, I can't even recommend any brands because it changes so quickly, but you know, do your research online and. You'll find the reviews. Are you talking about video too now? You, I mean, the, your thousand videos, how did you make them? Uh, those are done with a video camera, with a good, um, high quality video camera. A big one or a little one? Yeah, pretty big. Yeah, it's high definition. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm pretty serious. I'm pretty much a geek when it comes to video. We unlike have, we most have people. to talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but th these little cameras will shoot decent video. That's another amazing thing. Now, a couple suggestions. Photography tips. You want to give photography tips suggestions now? Yeah. yeah. Wait. Okay. Wait. Well, let, let, let the record reflect that Dennis Callan, 
right after this break is going to give photography tips. I hope you hang around for this one. And this is uh, Tech Travels with Dennis Callen on here on Think Tech Talks on a given Tuesday. I'm Jay Fidel. We'll be right back to hear about tips on cameras. And more. We want to thank our underwriters. Hawaiian Electric Company and its affiliates Maui Electric on Maui and Hawaii Electric Light Company on Hawaii Island are deeply committed to the communities they serve. Galen Ho is a senior executive of BAE Systems, a global defense, security, and aerospace company. The High Tech Development Corporation, this state's leading technology agency, attached to the Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism. Castle in Cook, Hawaii, with a time-honored legacy that spans more than 160 years and revolves around its mission of investing in Hawaii, creating communities, and providing for the needs of our state. Hawaii Gas, formerly the gas company, a proponent of the liquefied natural gas initiative, helping Hawaii achieve its transition to clean energy and a better energy future. Collateral Analytics, a Hawaii-based tech company empowering the real estate industry with greater and faster access to the tools and data they need to make better informed property investment decisions. I'm Nicole Horry. Thanks so much for joining us on ThinkTech. I'm Maria Kashen. See you next time. We're back, we're live, we're traveling. We're traveling mostly to Europe with, mm. with Dennis Callen. Mm -hmm. Tech Travels with Dennis Callen is the title of our show here on Think Tech Talks. I'm Jay Fidel, we're back, and now we're gonna do what we promised you. We're gonna give you tech tips on electronic cameras. Yeah, yeah, yeah a, few, a few basic tips on uh, still photography and also on video photography. Uh, first of all, get a good little camera. It doesn't have to be the big one, but the little guys now, and some of them even have interchangeable lenses, those small compact cameras. I have a suggestion. That's yeah. I just heard about it recently. Mm -hmm. Panasonic's. Yeah. Oh, they're Panasonic's a good brand. Lumix, oh, I think it's called. That is one of the best. And for yeah. less than $1,000, you can get a right. first-class, high-definition video yeah, camera. Absolutely. Uh, the size of one of those ordinary point-and-shoots. It's true. Great camera. The Lumix is a phenomenal camera. Sony also makes a very yeah. good camera at about that range and price point. Just too. came in. Uh, they, mm -hmm. Sony was here on uh, Friday at mm -hmm. this table. Oh. Oh, good. And they showed uh, one of their new cameras that was beautiful. It was not expensive, and it was mm -hmm. small and light, which is a consideration. I'm thinking maybe I should get rid of my big video <laughs> camera. But anyway, so you've got your little camera. So for still photography, <clears throat> you want to, first of all, learn how to use your camera before you go on the trip. Become very familiar with um, override, manual control, backlighting, uh, how to turn the flash on, how to force the flash on. Not automatic flash, but force it on mm -hmm. when you have backlight. You know, you're standing in front of some scenery, and it's pretty bright back there, and the sun is behind you, your face is in a shadow. Uh, it's going to be a terrible picture unless you turn on the flash, and then boom, then it's a very nice picture. Yeah. These things are very easy to do, but you have to, you know, learn that menu. Yeah. So learn the camera, and then shoot a lot. Uh, you should have the camera ready when you're out walking around. Don't have it in your bag turned off with a lens cap on. Have it ready. But don't get obsessed with it. That's the other issue that I, I'm guilty of that more than anybody, really. I'm always shooting video, but that's really my job, so that's, that's what I do. You can be forgiven. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. It's to share with everybody. But for that traveler, you want to capture the scenes, and you want to get those shots, but don't, don't look at the tour like this through the camera, which some people do. They'll or, or, it's hop off a tour bus, and they've got 10 minutes in a place, and it's all click, click, click. So you know, do it uh, in a reasonable way. But you want to get uh, the shot framed correctly, shoot on full power of the camera, don't dumb it down, use the full resolution, have enough SD cards that you've got plenty of storage, it's cheap now, you can get a 64 gigabyte card and mm -hmm. that'll get you through most trips with mm -hmm. one card. Mm -hmm. And then um, for video, a couple of basic tips for video. That same camera can take uh, pretty good pictures with video. But the th thing is, you've got to, first of all, hold the camera steady. And I don't mean steady like this. I mean really steady, just rock solid steady. You might want to rest it on something if you can. That's helpful. And try and do only a short pan if you're going to do a pan. Not one of these endless pans that goes around forever and ever and ever. Those it, tends are, to, it tends to oh, shift when you're doing that. It they're, shakes. They're really boring, and, <laughs> and they shake. So just a short pan. You start here, hold it, and then smooth to there. That's it. You're done. And keep your shots short, too. Four seconds, six seconds, something like that. And um, 
if you can remember those few tips, then you'll get some pretty pictures. It's also useful with video, especially, to review your shots at night. Not so much for the still photos. You can deal with that when you get home. There's thousands of them, right? But look at the video that you're shooting to see either how good or how bad it is. And if it's all shaky, then you're going to realize, oh, okay, i got to hold it more steady. So there's some basic What do you think about a monopod? Monopods are very good for video. Yeah, I've used a monopod. You can use it as a walking stick. You can use it as a club. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you, you feel pretty invulnerable <laughs> in the evening yeah. when you've got your club with you. You kill them with the camera. Like you know? Hercules, really. <laughs> now, lately, I've been using a tripod because, again, that, that's my job. That's, yeah. that's yeah. what I do. So yeah. for really good video, you want a tripod. But monopods get you more than halfway there. Yeah. They're really excellent. And they're good for a still photo in very low light where you need a long exposure. That's something else with your little camera on a still shot indoors or twilight. Twilight's a wonderful time to be out shooting. But try and hold it against something physically, like a pole or a post or a railing. There's always some fixed object nearby. And if you can utilize that and also frame your shot in low light, then do that. How about some tips on indoor shooting? Well, again, uh, you want to hold it really steady because the, even if it's a sensitive camera that can shoot at, let's say, a, uh, ISO of 800, it's still a little um, going to be shaky inside. So you want to try and anchor it down and use a little flash fill, not much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, now we got pictures. What about, what, well, I'll let you go. I'll let you, I'll let you go on this. But one question I have, which you may or may not address, is sound. Uh, do you well, for the have video, sound sure. If, well, you have sound on the video, but mm -hmm. anything, anything else? Well, no, you're not going to bring along a separate audio recorder, I don't think. Uh, your, ca your little camera will be recording sound so you use while it's shooting recorder. the video. Yeah. And some of these little cameras might even have a mic jack. That would be nice. That would be nice. It, if it does, then you know that, that that's going to be very helpful, yeah. have a mic jack. But that gets you gotta bring a mic, pretty right? advanced. <laughs> <laughs> you got to use it. But you could, you know, want to interview somebody, you just stick yes, a mic in their yes. face. Well, interviews, I just came back from a, a class at HPU, and they, you know, uh, this is a uh, communications class, and they have, yeah. a, they have, you know, the assignment is to do a little movie. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's great to do interviews on the road, right? Catch yeah. somebody and ask right. him his opinion about something. Mm -hmm. So to have a camera for that, I'm sure you do that, right? I, I do. I wish I did more of it, but it, it's a wonderful thing because it really breaks down the wall yeah. between you and that person. Yeah. And then for your viewer, it breaks down the wall, yeah. too. It just brings them right Many into the situation. Benefits, yeah. And uh, that's something about you know how to get the most out of your travels. We'll, we'll get to that topic very soon, if not uh, already. But we have a few more techie tips okay. before we get to how to get the most out of your travel. Okay. And certainly meeting locals is one of those things you want to do. But enough with photography, I think, for now. Huh? Okay. Um, let's talk about the basics of, of Wi-Fi. Everybody wants Wi-Fi in their hotels, and the good news is that almost all hotels have got Wi-Fi now. For a price. It depends. <laughs> it's a, if it's a cheap hotel, it's usually free. Okay. And if it's Isn't that funny the way that works? An, an expensive oh, hotel, they figure you got money, so they're going to gouge you a little bit more. <laughs> and there's a pool fee and a towel fee and a maid fee. It's getting like the airlines now with these, some of these hotels. Yeah. A gymnasium fee. Yeah. But for the most part, let's say you're in Europe back to my favorite Europe for travel, and you're in a three-star hotel, even a, most four-star hotels, they're not going to charge you. It's, it's included in the room rate. In, in an expensive hotel, if they do charge you, normally it's free in the lobby. So you can just go down to the lobby and check your email and do those mm -hmm, things and mm -hmm. upload a few pictures. So that's always handy. Yeah, that's do a little bit of more last-minute research, um, checking out some restaurants. Is it fast? Take a look at Yelp. Is usually, it fast in Europe. You know? Yeah, I mean, yeah, for yeah. example, it's uh, fun. Usually, it's pretty good. Yeah. Of course, it, it'll vary. Yeah. But I'd say on average, it's it's like you're going to get it at home. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That's mm -hmm. important to have. Uh, so that means <clears throat> uh, the iPad that you bring along mm -hmm. uh, will a wireless iPad be adequate, or do you yeah, need to connect right. up with a, with a telephone? You don't need a three G. No, you don't need that unless you really want to get fancy and put a SIM card in. Um, but the Wi-Pads all have Wi-Fi. And another great thing about it, uh, having your device then on Wi-Fi is Skype or other services to call home for free or for very cheap. Um, you know, with Skype account, it's, it's only about five cents a minute to call a landline from Europe or anywhere outside America to, to call home. 
But from what I understand now, even um, the smartphones are getting much cheaper on their international rates. Uh, I personally don't use a smartphone when I'm traveling. I've got a little cell phone with a SIM chip in it. <coughs> you just change the SIM chip. I, I change the SIM card when I change yeah. countries, right? You buy a $20 card when you get to France and put the card in. and That, that works very well with a little unlocked SIM card phone. I'll tell you what we've been doing. Yeah, see that map over on the wall, the studio, the oh, world yeah. map? No, the we, world. we go everywhere with Skype, everywhere. We go to Europe, we go to Asia, we go all points in between, mm -hmm. and we have uh, high-definition video calls uh, video calls right, people right. everywhere and we include them on the feed and we broadcast them yeah. and we we are having such a wonderful time with that mm -hmm. which suggests to me that on your next trip mm -hmm. we should do something on Skype we can mm. have we can have an interview with you okay doing Skype anywhere you say How sounds about good that, Dennis? sounds <laughs> great that'd be fun I, I Skype my my wife every day if she's not on that trip and um, we talk it's it's a very it's a wonderful uh, application yeah. to have it's great stuff so that, that's uh, the Wi-Fi, and, and then, you know, you're going to do a little bit of research the night before, maybe of um, maybe there's a museum somebody told you about, so then you can go online, find out what time does it open. Mm -hmm. some, some How much real, it costs. How much it costs. <laughs> some real practical stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. And then something else, um, during the trip now, let's, let's talk about uh, the trip itself. Okay. You're so now you're that? prepared. And, and uh -huh, sounds yeah, like gotcha. the gear that you have to gear. bring is a, is a, is a tablet, mm -hmm. a phone of some kind. Sure, <laughs> that's right. Uh, that works, uh, and, uh -huh. and, uh, and a camera, which could be your phone, but maybe better to have a separate camera. Yeah, I'd say for the techie stuff, that, that should cover it. Yeah. You know, maybe a laptop if you want to get elaborate, but yeah, tablets are great. You can do all of your email with the tablet. Yeah, and yeah. <clears throat> unless you're a business person, now that's a, another category. Well, when really I traveled last about. time around, I, I wanted to write an article for the paper, and I and I thought about bringing a, uh, a but I could not imagine doing on a tablet. You want to write an article mm -hmm. for the paper. I know you're right. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You really need more than a tablet. You to want write a keyboard your for that, yeah, sure. Yeah, you want a keyboard. Yeah, well, personally, I, I bring a laptop with me when yeah, I travel. Yeah, yeah. So I've got this backpack that's got my video camera and the batteries and the <laughs> charger and, and extra hard drives. In my case, I need extra external hard drives and my tablet. And the thing weighs about 40 pounds. Treat it as exercise. <laughs> yeah, that's just my backpack. So it, gets, it can add up. OK, so now you get the stuff. You're ready to go. Now you want to make mm. it work while mm. you're traveling. What's, what's mm. the score on that? Well, how to get the most out of your trip. Let's just knock that one uh, around for a while. How to get the most out of your trip. You, you want to have done all of that prep work, and so that you're all ready, you're pretty knowledgeable in the place, and, and you've got a pretty good idea uh, when you get to a town of, of what's interesting to see. You have a list. You know, you're not just getting there and then trying to make it up. Mm -hmm. So you've got your list. You might even have a paper map. It's a written list. A written actually list. make a list yeah, of the things you sure. plan to see. I would do that. Top ten things. Yeah, it's easy to find these top tens. Sure you go to tablet. Yeah, well, sure. You go to TripAdvisor. They've got all the top ten things to do. And yeah. Google's got top ten things. So you want to find out what's popular. After all, you're a tourist. You're not thinking, oh, that's too touristic. I don't want to do it. No, you're going to see it. You want to see it, of yeah. course. Eiffel Tower. Oh, I don't want to go to the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Everybody goes there. But you want to do these things. So you have your list. And maybe maybe you have a map. You want to, the key things that I enjoy to discover a place are walking and trying to uh, then, you know, have, have an organized route that you're walking and then improvise and deviate from the route. That that's really summarizes the whole thing in a nutshell. How not to get lost, though. Mm, well, some people have GPS on their smartphones. That, yeah, that's uh, a good I case haven't, for a smartphone, isn't it? I haven't gotten there yet. Yeah. <laughs> but you can always ask. Now there's the next thing. Uh, yeah. You want to try and strike up some conversations very social. with local yeah. people. Yeah. And there's no better question than uh, say, oh, I'm lost. Can you Uy help la me out? Bibliotech. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> where is the nearest cafe? Or where is the fountain with Neptune? Or, you know, uh, can you, excuse me. But you have to be careful as to who you're trying to stop and talk to, because people are generally moving along they in, in the city. For you. Yeah. you know, New York City is the archetypal case, right? Yeah. Yeah. But you find somebody who is going slowly, or they're just standing waiting, maybe. Uh, or they make eye contact with you, they smile back at you, and so there's a person you can talk to. You can go up and say, oh, excuse me, uh, do, do you speak English? And that's, that's a good, a good opener. opener. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or do you understand English, even? 
A lot of people don't want to admit they speak any English, but they'll grant they can understand. So do you understand English? And that breaks the ice. And then you just take it from there. Okay, and, and after this break, we, we will take it from there. We're going to talk about, we're going to have this hypothetical conversation, Dennis. That's mm -hmm. Dennis Callan, travels with Dennis Callan. Actually, tech travels with Dennis Callan here on Think Tech Talks on a given Tuesday. We'll be right back after this break. Aloha, I'm Maria Kashem of Think Tech Hawaii, and I want to tell you about our Think Tech talk shows. If you didn't know it, Think Tech streams video and audio for all of its shows live on the internet from 2 to 5 p.m. every weekday afternoon, and we replay them all night long on Ustream.tv. Visit ThinkTechHawaii.com for our live stream and YouTube links. Raise your awareness on Think Tech. I'm Maria Kashem, and I'll see you there. Aloha, I'm Jay Fidel of Think Tech. We have some news for you. In addition to our ThinkTech TV show and our Asia in Review show on Olelo 54, as of January 1st, we're adding Community Matters to play also two hours a week. Check out thinktechaway.com for the specific times of each of these shows. We hope you enjoy all three. Mahalo, I'm Jay Fidel. Ah, we're back, we're live, we're at ThinkTech Talks. I'm Jay Fidel here on a given Tuesday with Dennis Callan. Traveler par excellence, par extraordinaire, mm -hmm. uh, a career traveler, if you will. And we're talking today about travels with Dennis Callan, or as you may, tech travels with Dennis Callan. So here we are on the street corner. This reminds me out of that scene with Trap with uh, Crocodile Dundee trying mm -hmm. to strike up a conversation with a New York stockbroker. Oh yeah, <laughs> they, won't, they won't talk to him. That can be tough. Yeah. How do you make people talk to you? Well, as we were discussing, you want to find the, the right person um, who is not in a rush, somebody who's maybe waiting or standing or whatever, uh, maybe a younger person. The older people might not speak English or feel comfortable with it. So just break the ice. Um, excuse me, can you help me out? Do you know where the nearest toilet is? Or can you, do you know where the Spanish steps are? Or mention some landmark that's kind of nearby, and especially if it's something you really need some help on. And then when the conversation gets going, you'll be able to judge if that person has a little bit more time for you or that's it and they're off. But if they've got some time. My, my wife and I, we, we walked around Paris and we were asking people for where the Marais was. We didn't know exactly how to get there. And we asked one woman, she had to be well into her 80s running around there and she, mm -hmm. she took us there. Wow. And then she spent the rest of the day with us. Wow. <laughs> That's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> it was wonderful because some people really respond to that. They do. I, I had something like that in Paris um, last time I was at a bus stop and I wanted to know where is the other bus stop for the express bus. So I'm asking people just where is the, at the bus and this older lady um, comes over to me speaking no English at all, but she pulls out her purse and uses it as a blank map. Yeah. And she's showing me on her purse, she says, we're here, and you want to go down there and over there. And she's drawing this elaborate invisible map on her purse. And it was wonderful. I never found the bus stop. But it, was, it was more therapeutic for her than you. Oh, it, was, it was a very touching, it was a touching interaction. Now, you're going to find that uh, Europeans, and we're back in Europe here with this discussion, uh, are very friendly, they're very sociable. The whole essence of European life is the family and the society. Um, you see that in the streets. You see the sidewalk cafes, and what you really see, let's talk about infrastructure at the same time. You see these pedestrian lanes yes. almost everywhere, especially lately, the last 10 years, more and more so, pedestrian lanes in Europe, and it's the locals who are out walking, and some tourists, of course, too. So this is prime hunting ground if you want to find some local to talk to. You head into the pedestrian lanes and ask, oh, where's a good croissant around here? What's a good bakery? Mm -hmm. What's a good restaurant? What yeah. do you suggest for a yeah. restaurant? Yeah. That's a good yeah. way yeah. to find yeah. a restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Ask a local. And they'll get excited about that, maybe, and maybe they'll walk you there. You might end up having a meal together. <laughs> I've had that experience out of nowhere. <laughs> or at least a drink. Yeah, really. They like to drink, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't mind if you buy them a drink, too. <laughs> oh, that's always a good offer. Let me get you a glass of wine. 
Okay, now we're talking. <laughs> well, you talk about infrastructure, and I mean, that's really important. And then the walkways, the way the city is planned, you know, the fact oh, that, there's a, boy. that there's a real architecture <laughs> around you. The architecture is consonant. It speaks uh, to you. It, it, mm -hmm. offers you. it offers you special benefits. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't have that. We don't. We have eclectic at, at best, you know. You know, the, the difference between Europe and, and most American places is night and day. In, in Europe, the cities are livable places where you've got the shops on the ground floor and the apartments upstairs. Mm -hmm. And they're designed such that there's back courtyards, usually, for the apartments so that they can be quiet. They can have quiet rooms on the back sides of these buildings. The air and light comes through. And yet, they've got the neighborhood amenities. America, of course, is suburbia. You drive miles out to your house and you're surrounded by a little moat we call a lawn <laughs> and a fence. Right, right, right. You've got your feudal yeah, fiefdom. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. We don't have neighborhood bars by and large. We don't Pubs, have that whatnot. sidewalk yeah. cafe yeah. on the corner. It, it's happened in Europe and you see it and you see people taking advantage and enjoying it. They're out, especially on weekends, they're out walking and in a small town they're all running into their friends. They're walking dogs and the dogs are talking to each other so the people stop and they start talking. In the big cities, you've got the same thing going on, pedestrian zones, not just a street, but entire zones. And we look at Hawaii, for example. We could learn some things from this. Many things, I think. You know, unfortunately, here we've only got, uh, for a pedestrian area, the Fort Street Mall, which um, has limited right success. Outside. Right outside, the lower mall area is really quite beautiful, but that's the exception to our situation. I would love to see Kalakaua Avenue to widen the sidewalks, at least. It will still need some lane, a couple lanes of through traffic on Kalakaua. But widen the sidewalks, then you could have outdoor restaurants. We Imagine. have the best weather in the world. Why can't we do that? There's no place along Kalakaua where you can sit outdoors at a cafe or a restaurant. People love to watch other people. Right. That's one of the, the main experience. That's one of the main activities <laughs> when you travel. Yeah. People watching. Yeah. And that, that's why in Italy they've got the passeggiata. This is a great <laughs> tradition. It, 5 p.m., 6 p.m., it's the people strolling, passeggiata, passing along and just coming out before dinner, after work. Maybe they're on the way to get a drink, maybe they're doing a little shopping, but really what they're doing is just people watching. Yeah. They're showing off and they're looking, they're scoping out other yeah, folks. It's, they're it's checking, an occupation. And the ladies are checking out the other ladies' fashions, and the guys are checking out the other ladies' fashions, and, and kids are running around, and, and just everybody's having a great time with yeah. this stroll, the passeggiata. It's a tradition. Yeah, Big promenade. cities and small cities. Yeah. I was in Rome last month uh, on a Sunday night. There must have been 40,000 people on the main street, the Via del Corso. I'd, I'd never seen it so crowded. And they weren't really shopping, not many shopping bags in hand. Shops are open, yeah. but they're just out for a walk. Yeah. And that happens if you have the infrastructure for it. If you don't have that street for pedestrians, it ain't gonna happen. Yeah. So here in, in Honolulu, it's not happening. We don't have, we don't even have sidewalks in a lot of communities. True, and we certainly, we, know, we never have wide sidewalks. We never have a promenade, except as you say, the Fort Street Mall. And, and is bicycle only... lanes is another thing too. Yes. In Europe, oh, bicycles yeah. are taking off. This shared bicycle right now, plans, yeah. it's phenomenal. Paris started it, and now every city has yeah. got yeah. thousands beautiful, of beautiful. free or very cheap bicycles Making those with the lanes. completely livable. With the lanes. You gotta have a protected lane for the bicycle. Yeah. That's really the key. So that's something we could be doing here. Not only the weather is perfect for it here, the distances are relatively short, and town is relatively flat. So it really could be done. Tell me about the, uh, the, 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 the commuter, not commuter trains, but the downtown trains. Trains to get mm. around within the city, what's it like? Yeah, well, you know, they've got, of course, in the big cities, cities with two million plus, they have subways, usually. But the, if it's a million people, they don't have subways. They don't have elevated trains, by and large, either. Mm -hmm. uh, what is happening is a revival of the trams. The streetcars are coming back gangbusters all over Europe. And, and, of course, they had them 100 years ago, and many cities have retained them through that time period. But and more often, they went away. They were abandoned. Mm -hmm. Now they're being reactivated. New tracks are being laid. Lanes are being taken away from oh, cars. Lovely. So it's right at street level. Lovely. Even in towns with 200,000 people, 
300,000. Now, mind you, the European uh, 300,000 people is living in a dense uh, situation. With population density, you can support rail transit better than you can if it's in suburbia. Like in Honolulu, uh, elevated rail transit, uh, that's one of my own topics, is uh, ridiculous. We're just not appropriate for it. But a street level tram might make some sense. I didn't even consider that. I don't know why they, they didn't never consider that. No, they just were only looking at the elevated rail. But anyway, the, the street level trams in Europe, it's so easy to get on it because you're on the sidewalk and it pulls up and you walk right on. It's yeah. it's level with the sidewalk. Yeah. And you then you have to write a couple stops, you see the shops going by, you see there's a shop I want to go to, you get off. It's good for business. And you watch people to get yeah, you, know, you do. <laughs> you see the scenery gliding right by. It doesn't have to go fast. It's and okay it, not to go fast. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And when it gets out of downtown, it goes a little faster. Yeah. But yeah. In, in town, it's just putting along. In fact, it's in a shared roadway with bicycles and pedestrians and baby carriages. And, and people cross the tracks. You walk right across these tracks. It's, it's not a problem. So, so it really is. It's not a barrier. It's, a, it's kind of an addition to this whole gestalt about livable cities. Yeah, it really is. I was in Nice just last month in the south of France, and they put in a brand new tram right down the main street, and it's trans transformed the city. Interesting. It was a beautiful city to begin with. It's the street with all the hotels on it, that street? Uh, no, not the oceanfront street. Now, that's still for cars and the promenade des Anglais with the wide sidewalk that's by the, the beach. That's the one I know, yeah. And, you know, and, and the beach side is open. They don't have hotels on smart. the beach side of their road. This is really smart. We should have learned from Planned that. Planned it a long time ago. So they, they really got a lot to teach us, uh, especially about residential densities. Medium density, they don't have much skyscraper apartments. Uh, usually in Europe, it's a uh, general rule of five-story buildings for apartments with your shops on the ground floor and block after block after block of just that. So it really builds up as a city. Barcelona is another great example. I was also there recently. My most recent movie is on YouTube. You can have a look at it. Okay. And you'll see the, um, it's called the Ahample, the extension of Barcelona, was planned around the year 1900. Master planned by one engineer with large blocks and central courtyards for each one of those blocks, wide boulevards, wide sidewalks, and uh, it's beautiful. It's it, a wonderful it's, city. It's, it's, it's still modern. functioning so perfectly, yeah. uh, better than this engineer could have even imagined, I think. <laughs> and still you've got the old Gothic quarter with its narrow lanes and it's very atmospheric and wonderful to walk through this pedestrian zone. So you have both happening right there. Barcelona is amazing. Yeah. What about the roads? You know, I, I oh, they're so I much better than our roads. But the roads are well maintained. There are no potholes. Am I right? Everywhere in Europe, they're beautifully maintained. And from what I've seen in most Asian cities, uh, you know, modern Asian cities, they're too well maintained. Nothing like we have the worst roads that I've experienced. That's it's saying like, something. You know, Here's third a man world. who's traveled everywhere. He <clears> says <throat> that, you gotta take that seriously. I've, I've rented cars in um, Italy and France in the last couple of years, and driven on the country roads between the towns. Never saw a pothole. Always smooth, and very good signage. Uh, lots of traffic circles, too, instead traffic of- Traffic circles, it's a great idea. That's high tech. <laughs> you see them all over the place. <laughs> they can get a little out of control if there's too many, but. It, rather than having traffic lights or stop signs at every intersection, a traffic circle. Yeah. We only have one here on Kamoku Street. Yeah, I know the one. We, we could use a few more. Why do we stop at one? I never understand <laughs> a perfectly successful facility up there in Kamoku mm -hmm. and they stopped. <laughs> but our, our plans for, like, for Kakaako, uh, I think are a bit of a disaster with these skyscraper expensive luxury condominiums. It's really kind of crazy. We're, Focusing everything in that one district, for one thing, we've got all over Mahanolulu we could be looking at for a master plan, all the way from, say, Kapu'ulu Avenue out to Middle Street. The whole city, Kalihi and Moilili, Makali, Kapu'ulu, Ka Lower Kaimuki, but no, we're just focusing on Kaka'ako. Without, with, without integrating it. Not integrating it at all. It, it's something, again, we, we should be learning from these European cities. They build in the urban core not out in the farmlands. They preserve the farmlands. In Europe, the city is a very discreet entity, and then it has a boundary, and then beyond the city, it's usually rural and farmlands. It's not suburbia. So you've got urban, 
and country. Yeah. That's how it works. Western Canada, the same thing. Australia, the same thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's a European influence. Uh, right. But, you know, this leads me to a, a question which we had not discussed, but let me throw it at you. Okay. <clears throat> You've traveled a lot. You've seen cities that are beautiful. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the fullest mm -hmm. sense mm -hmm. of the human experience of a city, which is really important for the human experience. <clears throat> and you come back and look at Honolulu and you see these problems. And you've enumerated only some of them. There are others, mm -hmm. many others, about infrastructure and flow and development and, and renewal. We don't have those things. And, mm -hmm. and uh, we may have beautiful weather, but we don't have those things. And we're squandering so much in the way of what we could have if we just attended to it and did some good planning. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> don't you think maybe someday you're going to take a plane on a one-way trip? Me, no. Me, personally? <laughs> what keeps you well, here? Hawaii, Hawaii's been my home for almost 50 years, <laughs> so that's a big anchor. <laughs> and I get to go away. So I get my rock fever taken care of with, with trips. You know, granted, we're the most isolated place, and it's hard to get from here to anywhere. But with the jet age, you get on a plane, and the next day you're somewhere else. Uh, so I, I think I'll stay here. I'd like to stay here. I've always been very political here, Good. and I've been very active <laughs> in uh, organizing communities and putting out urban ideas and such. And I'll, I'll continue uh, with that to some degree or another because I, I think we've got great potential here in Honolulu to build a beautiful city. We haven't even begun to take a look at it. The, our current mayor, our current legislature, our current governor, I think are all complete failures, including the city council. So they're all, every one of them. Maybe there's a few exceptions. <laughs> but the people have got ideas. Look at the communities in the, the windward side who are trying to protect Kailua, their environments. Kailua trying to protect its environment. The North Shore. People um, are, are really rising up more so than previously. So uh, there's a lot of hope for, for building a great city. Well, I think, you know, what you, what, you, what you point out, I think, tell me if you agree, is that for a long time, the way we were planning things and building this kind of eclecticism all over town, thoughtless, you know, <clears throat> unplanned eclecticism, mm -hmm. was because people had, did not have, they did not have the experience of travel. They did not have your experience of mm -hmm. going to Europe and seeing the way cities really work. Mm -hmm. It's kind of on this fluid way they work. It's beautiful to watch and mm -hmm. participate in right. and walk down that promenade. Right. Uh, and if more people did, you know, travel is broadening, more people did make that trip with you mm -hmm. or elsewise. That'd be nice, they can go with me <laughs> or go on their own, sure. They would learn about infrastructure, they would learn about planning. They would see there are much better ways to do it than what we've uh, failed to do here. As you say, there's really been a lack of planning. That, that's what it gets right down to. Uh, I studied urban planning at the university as well, too. This is very revealing. Yeah, um, that's one of uh, two and a half master's degrees okay. at the University of Hawaii, <laughs> including some urban planning Compulsive, studies. I'd say. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the late 60s, early 70s, okay. those are the days. But we could plan, but we need a strong government, and we need a public private partnership, and we need cooperation from unions. They're all hungry for work, and we really could be building, but it would require a lot of government intervention, which our government is very timid to do. Yeah. It might require, for example, um, some lot consolidations, when you have a lot of little small lots, say Moililim or Macaulay, maybe the government should step in and say, well, for a reasonable plan for this neighborhood. We have to condemn. We have to condemn. We have to build at the block level, at the block scale. And there's a lot of uh, slums in the city. Yes. There's a lot of old wooden buildings. Yes. that are providing cheap rental. So we have to be very concerned about that too, but it can be done. You take a block, you build some inexpensive rental with government support, and then people can move in to these nice new facilities, a well-planned block, and then their block can be torn down. It, it's kind of draconian measures, but uh, some of that could be called for in some of our communities. And the, the trade-off is that we could have a beautiful, new, well-planned city fully integrated from one end to the other, functioning beautifully for the next 50 years, looking ahead. Oh, could happen. What's the first step, Dennis Callen? The first step, well, elections, I suppose. So <laughs> pay close attention to who you're voting for. Well, you know, but I think candidates should be candidates who have traveled, who have taken a look and seen the way, you know, community development is done elsewhere. That's true, too. Education of the public, that, that's a, a very basic first step. And they can get educated by watching my videos. 
<laughs> they, okay. they can go to tourvideos.com, mm -hmm. and, and there I've got over 1,000 videos, uh, short videos you, on YouTube. You, do you also take pictures of, uh, of infrastructure in these videos? Well, I, I do. That's what it's all about. Most of my videos are about the place, about the buildings, the streets, the people, the, the restaurants, the cafes. It's, it's put, it puts you there. It's like yeah, being there. there. And, then you, and then you can get an idea of what life is like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, also the museums and the culture and the, the fine arts and the, the sculptures and those wonderful things that are the fountains that are always there around you too. But yeah, the architecture has always been a fascination of mine and it shows up in most of my videos. So how long are you going to continue to do this? Oh, a long time. I'm, You're not I'm, yet done then. Well, I graduated from college in 67 and now I'm 67 years old okay. and um, I'm feeling pretty good. So I'm, I'm looking at another 10 to 15 years of travel <laughs> and another 30 years of editing my videos. I hope when I'm about 99, I'll be editing my last movie. I'm about 10 years behind right now, so I've got a lot of work to do. It gets me out of bed in the morning. Well, send us some videos. We'll play them here at Think Tech. Thank you. And if anybody wants to see your website, it's... Uh... Tourvideos.com. Okay. That's the video. Or toursbytrain.com for the trips. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's uh, Dennis Callen, Travels and Tech Travels with Dennis Callen. Infrastructure Travels with Dennis Callen. Infrastructure. <laughs> right Urban right Planning with Dennis Callen. It's been wonderful. We have to do it again. Okay. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. <laughs>